big dare. Fail. We're all trained to learn that failure is the end of the world. It's really bad. You should get it right, be perfect the first time, do it right. But that's not how life works. Failure is not the end of the world. Failure is just learning. It's just information gathering. If you're failing, you're growing. Now I can talk, I can talk a little tough up here. God's gonna go in there and fail, so I, I should share with you a story from my own failure. You may have noticed in that last clip, I tied my boat to my tent. There's a reason for that. When I was going around Newfoundland with Kip, we would kayak about 12 hours every day. At the end of the day, we would drag our 250 pound boats up the beach full of a month's worth of supplies. They were heavy. Dragging our boats up. And we had the conversation, you think this is far enough? Well, yeah, there's the high tide mark. There's the storm surge mark. We should be good. Kip said to me, you want to tie your boat up? Nah, we're fine. I mean, unless it's like a mega full moon and a freak high tide, I think we're good. Let's go to bed. Fast forward six hours. I wake up with a spotlight in my face. Except it's not a spotlight, it's a mega full moon, which means there's a freak high tide. Oh, crap. I get out of my tent, I run down to the beach, and there, waiting for me, is Kip's kayak. My kayak decided to go for a little jaunt. Failed. You see, when you're on a kayak trip, when you're cir circumnavigating the island of Newfoundland with a kayak, there's a key piece of equipment you need in order to do that, a kayak. And when you don't have a kayak, you're not on a kayak trip. I had just spent three months failing at a kayak trip. It was done, it was over. I had all my maps, my camera, all my pictures, half the food, half the equipment, gone. So we didn't know what to do. We started running up and down the shore. We had headlamps on. But if you've paid attention to some of my photos, the shoreline of Newfoundland is not something you want to be running around in the middle of the night. So we had to wait till daylight. We hatched a plan. Kip decided he was going to hitchhike to the nearest town and hire a plane and go look for my boat in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> now, it is bright red, but uh, I didn't have too much faith in that plan. So I was sitting there at a campsite, soaking being mad at myself. And I looked at his boat, started looking at the wind, and I figured, oh, my boat probably drifted about one kilometer an hour, did a little math in my head, looked at my maps, and I got in Kip's boat. And I went out to sea, and I looked for my kayak. I paddled for half an hour, nothing. Another half an hour, nothing. Another hour, nothing. And just as I'm about to give up, head back, admit that I did not own a kayak anymore. I see it. You know, you're riding the swell out there. I'll set the stage for you. Imagine a horizon line. You have water, horizon, sky, 360 degrees. Because when you go kayaking for two hours, you can't see land after a while. So I'm out there floating around, feeling down, and then, <laughs> Don't get excited. Don't get excited. You want to talk about a moment of flow? I was engaged. <laughs> go on, go on. Oh, I think that's it. That was it. There was my kayak. Camera, maps, everything. And, as a bonus, a little seagull sitting on the boat. <laughs> mine, mine, mine. <laughs> so I tied that boat up and I towed it back to our campsite. And at that point, Kip was coming back to let me uh, hear the bad news that he hadn't managed to hire a plane. <laughs> it's fine. We kept going on our journey. So I learned from that experience. I grew from that experience. Do you want to know what the big epiphany, the big lesson that I learned from that experience? Let's tie your boat up.